Hi guys, so today we're going to be taking a look at Microsoft Teams etiquette. We'll be going into why you should publish one, what to include in it, and when to send it out. I'm Gavin from MeTime. We help businesses with modern workplace transformations, and all of the tips we put on YouTube have come out of real life examples. Remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you haven't already to get notified every time we release a new video. We've got new videos on Teams coming out every Tuesday. And if you want to know more about Microsoft Teams training, best to view our full basic training series, as well as a free download of our deck to go along with those videos. So click the link below and get that deck if you haven't already. So without further ado, let's go and take a look at Teams etiquette. Okay, so we're going to take a look at Teams etiquette today. And why we're taking a look at etiquette and calling it etiquette is because that getting your organization into a new modern way of working is a big cultural change. So if you just want to turn Teams on and use it for chat and calling, it's probably going to do all right, but you're not really going to unlock all of the efficiencies and all of the savings that you can get from Microsoft Teams and using that as the hub for all of the other Microsoft products to show up in to make your change management in your organization a lot easier. So we published some etiquette quite far on in our team's journey, trying to wrap all of the training and the change management we'd done along our journey together and sort of a final resting place, if you like, of everything that people need to know, sort of all in one place and a little more informal and jokey way of prodding people to do the right thing and uh, go into why that we're, all of the training is there and why we're telling people to do what we're telling them to do. So just flip onto my screen, then this is the news post that we published. Um, started off with a bit of a reminder about uh, why we're on this journey and the amount of change that we want people to go through and got a bit of a quote from Seth Godin on cultural change to help people understand that. Uh, rules help control the fun, obviously, from the uh, sage Monica Depp Geller of Friends. And then we split our etiquette down into three areas that I'm going to talk through today. Uh, sort of a jokey, half jokey way of getting people to do the right thing, like I say. So first one, uh, it's rude to whisper. So we don't want people putting stuff into Teams and then it's immediately lost. Um, so a lot of the challenges that you have, especially when you're first getting your organization onto Teams, is that stuff's everywhere, don't know where to find things, I'm losing stuff, and people immediately go back to email. Uh, if they're using Teams at all, um, they still might be going back to email to, for important communications. So I'll, I'll, I need to put this on email because it's important so I don't want people to lose it, which is just an excuse of not using Teams properly and not holding everyone else to account that Teams is the way that we're going to do stuff. Um, so first one, really important, it's rude to whisper. Um, putting stuff in the wrong place and not allowing everyone to benefit from it costs us time, decision making, money and lost opportunities and well-being because we need more meetings and more time at work and more time just going over the same stuff. So don't be the person that consistently makes it difficult for other people to find things. And then we put three ways to help for each of our uh, etiquette posts. So three ways you can help in It's Rude to Whisper is the very basics. At mention someone or a channel in every new post that you do to make sure someone at least is getting notified about that and bringing them into the team, bringing them into the right channel, bringing them into the conversation um, and showing up so other people might benefit from that as well. Similar to that, post in the right channel based on topic and we've got a link to our channel structure for that. Um, if you haven't published your channel structure yet, you need a purpose for every channel, what it's gonna be used for, where you want people to put stuff, um, all of that structure needs to go in. I wouldn't advise doing that at the start. You need a bit of just letting people see how they got on with it and making their own mistakes because then it makes the change easier. But at some point down the line, you want a channel structure published and you can link back to that there. And then really the last one in It's Rude to Whisper is <laughs> like um, people literally whispering, 
you want to minimize the amount of private group chats you've got and internal email. Uh, both of them are a the antithesis of what you want your team's culture to be. And we're working out in the open. Uh, private chats is great for one-to-one -one stuff. It's great if you need to set up a team that, you know, a very quick team that needs to get together and get stuff done without setting up a new channel or a new team if you've got some some restrictions on how to do that in your organization. But overuse of group chat, especially where you're recreating channels that are already in the team, uh, is just not good because you're just excluding people from being able to see day-to-day -day stuff. So if it's about day-to-day -day business and there's already a channel there, it's not private, put it in the channel. Um, don't set up chat groups that mimic existing channels to exclusion of others. So don't have a splinter group chat about the day-to-day running of the business, put it in the channel that's designed to do that. Um, but if it's about you know a one-to-one -one with your boss or a direct report, that's where you should use private chat and just letting people know what is acceptable and what's not in your cultural change. So that's it's rude to whisper. Number two, it's rude to shout. So the opposite, we want a happy medium between these two. Um, so you need a balance of notifying the right people to be inclusive without bombarding um, your team with too much noise. Um, so you're, as you if you follow our guidance, you should be setting up your teams to be quite large to get all the benefits um, that Microsoft say you can get, and the serendipity of seeing other people's posts and seeing stuff that you don't even know you need to know. Um, you should have be setting yourself up with for quite large teams. Um, and if you haven't done that, you might want to see our best practice big picture video, which I'll link in the description below. Um, but you should be mindful that not everything is important to everybody equally. So for example, we don't want people to post in general that much. We don't want people to use at general for, uh, very much, um, unless you've created a news post or unless your post is generally applicable to everybody in the team. Um, we don't want people overusing a very wide uh, at mention. So three ways you can help for its rude shout is avoid posting in or at mentioning in general unless it generally might be of interest to everybody. Um, if it is of interest to the whole team, then consider making a news post because you can make, make it more engaging, um, benefit from the weekly email digest, reinforce your message. Consider posting in a specific channel on the topic rather than posting in general. You can still at mention general if it is applicable to everybody, um, but there probably is a channel about the topic you want to put in if as long as you down your team's journey you've built out the channels to uh, manage everything. And then the, lastly, this is all in point one, not much, if anything, should be posted in general. Think again, winky face. <laughs> so we we'll just say, look, really think about before you post something in the general channel, um, it's not the best place for stuff to go. You want to be splitting topics out as you know, you find out what topics need to be in the team and people that it's great, you know, fine, let them use general when they're first on um, and see what gets posted there. See if you get a lot of traction. You don't want to be restricting people and putting a lot of rules in place when you're first on your journey. But as you build out, you then need some structure and some things to stop all the clutter. Um, second way you can help is you want to tell people which channels to mention to pick out the people that they need to know. So in our instance we're saying look if you want to notify all the people in sales at mention these three channels and you'll hit all of those you also get people that are following those channels that um you don't know about which is fine if they don't need those communications they can ignore them um, and then also minimize editing and re-editing re-editing posts with no new information so we found that some people are just going click edit and tick and that's pinging people every time because they think that's bringing people into their post uh, which it is but there's no new information there. If you've already seen it, it's really annoying because you're getting pinged again and you think, well, has it changed or not? No, it hasn't. So just going and finding out the same thing again. So don't overly communicate, basically is that. And we want to get a medium between. It's rude to whisper and it's rude to shout. Third etiquette tip is don't be messy. So there's a lot of stuff on Teams and the most consistent feedback that we found and I've heard um, time and time again is it's being hard, it, being hard to find things in Teams. I think that's a training need. I think Teams is much easier and search is much faster.
than any legacy solution. So any old shared drives you've got, um, anything like that, the search is a lot, lots quicker in Teams. All of our clutter actually was human generated, nothing to do with the technology, um, but the technology gets blamed for it. So I've moved to Teams and we can't find anything, so it must be Teams. Tell the people that are putting stuff in the wrong place where to put it. You haven't followed up with them when you can't find things. The person that's responsible for publishing this particular deck is putting it in the wrong place. It's actually their fault and not Teams's fault. So we need to think reader centric and three ways you can help in that regard is one, put your things in the right place. So click reply when replying. So this is the second biggest thing that I keep banging on about because people do miss replying and start a new post. If they do a new post, they think that they don't need to put an app mention on, etc. So click reply when replying. Put your files in a relevant folder. So if you have not sorted out your channel and file structure yet, that's the thing that you need to sort out first. And clean up your own mess. So edit, delete, or move posts or files in the wrong place. It's your accountability for making sure it's in the right place. And again, you wanna, in your channel structure, think about having an owner and who's accountable for what in each channel. So someone should be accountable for making sure people put stuff in the right place. Um, so second, think reader centric, make it easy for them and not you. So put a title on every new thread, helps others see quickly see the point of what that post about. Link files using the paper icon until Microsoft align how text links show up. So if you've got a text link, it doesn't show up like, it just shows up like text with a hyperlink. Uh, if you link it with a paper icon, then people can see it at the top of the post. Also, when you get going through to that file, you can see the thread attached to that file if you use a paper icon, not so if you use a text link. We've got another video on that, which I'll try and link in. Um, and share news in the most engaging way. So choose the right medium, Consider when a news post might be better than a Teams post. A news post will appear in the team automatically if you've got the SharePoint connector set up. And if you've got a uh, email brief that you're using from SharePoint News, then obviously that anything news that's posted there will appear on that as well. So it gets people back into that uh, communication if it's important. Um, and also you can make it engaging and accessible. So video on streams got automatic captioning, um, which can help with search and help with any accessibility needs that people have got either now or in the future if you bring people on into your company. So it's the three etiquette rules. So it's rude to whisper, it's rude to shout, don't be messy. And then we've got a bonus fourth one to underpin everything. Basically it's rude to moan. So not everyone is going to like the change that you're putting in. Some people will resist it, not like it. Uh, but basically we're saying, look, it's not, it's okay if you don't like it. If you want to try and make it better, that's great. If it's not working for you, we need to know and we can work a way of doing it. But if you're just chatting to your colleagues, saying you hate it, basically moaning about it, um, and you're not prepared to do anything else, then don't basically. Constructive feedback is great. If you're passionate enough to want to make something better, and if you are passionate enough to bother opening your mouth to moan about it, great, you've just volunteered to step up and lead the change to make it better. If you're not prepared to help, keep your thoughts to yourself. Teams isn't going away. Um, we've got some more contacts on that that we'll do in a free training in a couple of weeks. But Teams is not going away. It's the way that we're all gonna work going forwards. And so we all need to pull this together to make it work. Three ways you can help to not moan is, fill in, if you're about to moan, just fill in the feedback survey. Um, it's good to include a form in all of your communications about Teams, so it's really easy for people to get back to and find that survey. Uh, ask for help from your champion, and obviously you should have a champion's network set up. And watch the training. Most of the moaning is already covered in the bite-sized training that we produced, and I would uh, recommend that you produce your own internal training, uh, both just in time and just in case training, and follow the etiquette and channel structure to take action and make things better. So whistle stop of the three things and the bonus fourth thing to unpin them all uh, in today's uh, video. Hopefully that makes sense. What do you think are you gonna use Teams etiquette in your company? Uh, let us know in the comments below. Give the video a like if you liked it and click the subscribe and the bell icon if you haven't already. Click the free download link to get access to our deck to along with our free 
basic training tutorials on YouTube. If you want to work with us, email support at metimeapps.com or click the link in the description below. We've got some exciting developments coming out soon. And if you need help with your Teams or Modern Workplace rollout, please get in touch. Thanks for watching so far and we'll see you in the next video.